All right, everybody, so now that we've got the fork installed and the wheels installed, let's go ahead and knock out the brakes. Now, there's a lot of videos on how to bleed some SRAM brakes and Shimano brakes and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward through most of it and not give a lot of details, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks that may not be in the other videos, and we'll go on from there. All right, guys, installing handlebars on a stem is really no big deal. Very, very easy, very quick to do. A couple of tips that I have for you. For one, if you're using carbon handlebars, always use a torque wrench. Make sure you don't over torque those because clamping forces can really break those and use a torque wrench every time. Thank me later. Second thing is most of us like to get those handlebars perfectly straight with the wheel but it can be really hard to do unless you get the bike on the ground. So what I like to do in the meantime, instead of leaving this stem loose, is I'll go ahead and tighten these bolts with the stem obviously crooked. And doing that makes it so that it's not gonna flop around while I'm working with it, but when I put it on the ground, I remember to loosen these bolts, straighten this out, before I start trying to ride it. The worst thing you could do is leave these loose just telling yourself, oh, I'll tighten them up later, and then forget to tighten them up, and then you have a really bad time when you're out test riding. So, snug these up with it obviously crooked, and then straighten it out at the end. You'll notice here that there's a gap on the top between the stem and the faceplate, gap on the bottom. You want to make sure those gaps are mostly the same, or at least close to the same, and it, because it's going to give a much, much better bite on that handlebar. Here we are at the fork. A uh, quick note that I'd like to make here is some people like to route the caliper inside the fork. I think that looks much better. Some people like to route the caliper outside the fork. I think that's fine too. Either way, I don't think it makes a big difference. Before we screw this in, I know you can't see on the camera, but we are a little bit twisted up, so let's go ahead and untwist what we can and figure out the best way to put this on. Time to put the caliper on. So this particular caliper and fork and rotor combination is going to need a, a spacer. Uh, if you look, every adapter that you get has a arrow on it. And the arrow sometimes will say up or sometimes it's just an arrow like this. But essentially that arrow is just pointing whichever way the hose is going. So as long as you point it in the direction of the hose, you are going to be just fine. All right, this part is really hard to catch on video. What we have here is a very small gap between the pad and the rotor on this side and no gap on the other side. So what we need to do is we need to be able to visually see a gap on both sides. Um, the way I like to do this is I like to loosen one bolt and then pivot on the other bolt. So we're going to make sure that this bolt is not too tight and this bolt is loose. And then I'm going to just nudge it the tiniest bit and then snug it back into place. All right, I don't know if you can see on the video, but now there is a gap on both sides. All you need to do is just make sure you can visually see that gap on both sides.
video in the bag. That is the uh, brakes, handlebars, and grips all done. I hope you learned something. If you like the video, please like it. If you want to watch more videos like this, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.